Kent, what are you doing? I'm watching TV. Oh. You know what's on TV? Not nothing, but guess what? Hungry Man TV Dinner. I am going to show you how to skip the frozen food aisle, make it on your own, and it'll be the best thing ever. So come on, me and the Duke and the Big, we're going to get this one to going for you. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp, and thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day, and shh, the wind is not blowing yet. Whew, you don't get many days like this in southwest Oklahoma, I'm telling you for sure, but it's just a great day to be outside, and it's a great day to relive some memories, and I'm talking about memories that, whew, got me through some hard times, some tough times, but I always sort of fell back on this little meal because I really love it. You can ask Shan. I'll still get it out of the grocery store on occasion, but... You don't have to go down that frozen food aisle no more. Guess what? Hungry man. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Salisbury steak. How many shan you reckon I eat since you, you knowed me? A lot. Ooh, these things, folks, have got me through some really hard times, and I am not putting these fellers down a bit at all. But, folks, we're going to create or recreate this whole meal and make it even better than what it is there. And you remember when them frozen dinners come along? What'd they call them? TV dinners. Now, why would you call them a TV dinner? You sit for the yes, you, you could get that little food tray, little, put it right up there, set that down there, and you could watch I Love Lucy, Fred Sanford, the Beverly Hillbillies, Gunsmoke, and have you one of the greatest meals in the world. So the folks that come up with that stuff, hey, they sure helped a lot of people bring a little goodness into the house. But folks, we're gonna show you how to do it and it's really simple and it's really easy. And everything that we use will be listed down there in the little link below. So without further hoopla, let's get to going. Let's talk about the star of the show. Yes, let's give it up for the what? The ground beef. Yes, it is, it's what I'm talking about. We're using us some certified Angus beef 80-20, a pound and a half. Yeah, you can see in this little package, they is two of these. But I guarantee you folks, they ain't that big when you get through cooking them. So we got these two pounds here. Whoops, sorry, pound and a half. And I need you to get some of this original seasoning. What? You ain't got none. Well, the only place that you can get it is on our website. And we hope you got some of it and you enjoy it. We're gonna season pretty well. So about that much. And then guess what? We're gonna use us some dry mustard. Now I have done this with wet mustard, but I prefer dry. Then we're gonna have to have us some ketchup. About that much would be the correct <laughs> amount if I was guessing. A little smoked paprika. I know y'all see me pouring all this stuff in there and you think this guy ain't got no sense as to what he's doing or where he's doing it. He might even put some out there. <laughs> but the recipe and everything that you need to know about this little particular meal will be listed right down there below. And I've had some of you had trouble going down there scrolling, uh-huh printable recipe click boom ah what's it do take you over to the blog that's a fancy word for i'm going to write a lot of recipes on the website there you got all the recipes you're ever going to need to make happy meals every day now here we have two well beaten eggs yes and i just want you to scatter them out there amongst it and we're going to mix this up first before we add any of these bread crumbs so just get your hands in it. If you want to use a wooden spoon, you can. We got that all incorporated in their whale. So now it is time to dry this out a little, which is going to be breadcrumbs. So we're going to start with one cup of them breadcrumbs. Plain. Don't be getting none of them seasoned ones. I want you to get the plain. Now, just like when you're making biscuits, I need you to just put it in there as we need it. So we're going to go squashing it around here. Making sure that we get it all in there and more it is going to take. So that is one whole cup. We got to have that binder in there because with that egg, we need it so everything stays together. Woo la ho la, it is a done deal. We're going to call it just like that. Needs to set 30 minutes, folks. Okay, so let me set it over here. I want to show you a little something. Look right in here. I don't know if, can you see that, Shan? There's some gravy in there. You have seen me sop mm. that up, do a lot of sopping with a piece of bread. Whew, I'm talking about making some sopping good gravy. And what is it? A pound of them white mushrooms. 
don't be going in the backyard digging them up out of there and putting them in there because folks that'll make you see visions everywhere you'd be thinking you own maybe like the zombie show or something so stay away from them one large white onion now i need you to get you a cast iron skillet or a dutch oven that's deep enough to hold all this but folks we're going to put about this much gravy in it so make sure that it has a deep sidewall to it okay well the onions and the shrooms is ready to go and the butter has melted so we're going to add just a little dab of oil in there because we need some and i sure have been fond of avocado oil and let me tell you folks this is bertha do not set plastic over there on the hot part of it in go the shrooms and the butter and you can hear that sizzle that is a good sound it is and we're going to cook this down till them onions get what you call very translucent and them mushrooms get what you call it golden brown that's what i'm talking about so at this time we need to do a little seasoning here to all this goodness don't take much we're going to add us about six tablespoons of flour to this because we want this to whenever we get that liquid in there to where it'll automatically thicken itself so put a little in there at a time stir it around make sure everybody gets coated well and you got this probably over about medium heat in the house is what you're doing we got about five cupfuls of beef broth if you can find it i would tell you to buy the low sodium kind or even get that that says bone broth beef broth that's really because it's going to have less sodium in here because we got some salt in this we got some salt in the meat hey i'm just trying to look out for your health here in the new year so just add that in there make sure that we get all that stuff with sitting there on the bottom back to its original place and that's the goodness i like to forgot it's a really really good year it was we kind of have a little red wine now you can use white wine for this but I really like to use red wine. I think it makes it a little better. And you know it's good when it's in a plastic bottle. Yes, and it says Sutter Home. Now, I don't know where Sutter lived around here. He might have lived in that wood pile right there, but I thank him for dropping off this little dab of wine here. Duke is stuck in the wood pile. Duker! <laughs> hey, can you get out of there? Hey! In goes about a tablespoon or two of red wine. Gotta have it, folks. Just got to. Then we're gonna put in some of that W sauce. As Justin Wilson was saying, that Leanne Perrins, uh-huh. And it's about that much it is, which is the right amount. But you're probably asking yourself, why didn't we make the meat first and then make the gravy and pour it over the meat? Folks, we're gonna make the gravy first, pour it up, put the meat right back in here where all these good drippings was and cook it up a little and brown it. And then you throw the gravy on top. That's the way to do it. So we're going to just put this over medium heat. Let it come to a pretty good bowl to where it thickens. And then we'll take it off. Well, folks, that's what I call a simmering right along. And you can see the consistency got it's got. Because when we put that back in there with that meat, it's actually going to cook a little more and get I a little see thicker. It. It's too much bubbly. Hey, it's, that's all that flavor coming out of there. When that gets to that point, I need you to transfer it over into a pitcher, glass bowl, something. And that is a lot of goodness right there. Now, you need to try to get all that in there you can. Set 30 minutes it did and we got it out of there. Now, I need you to just sort of divide it into, I'd say like six equal pieces to start out with. We'll see what we come up with. Duke is keeping watchful eye to make sure that my mathematics is really well. He knows all about this stuff he does. A tip I meant to tell you before we ever got started in this endeavor is if you're going to work with raw hamburger meat like that, if you wet your hands just a little before you start, it don't stick to you near as bad. I need you to flatten them out and then I need you to sort of make them a long oval. Yes, I do. And that same Dutch oven or that skillet that you was using, I need you to go ahead and let's just take two tablespoons of butter and drop right in there, them same drippings, everything that was going on. Set it over in a warm spot and just let it get to melting. And let's make some more of these Salisbury steaks. The iron is hot and the butter is sizzling. So it's time to add these little beef babies here that's what I would call a full boat. Everybody is in. The life preservers have been snapped on and we're ready to go to town. Let the frying begin. 
Now we're just going to cook these about two or three minutes on each side until we get that good golden brown there. And that's what that butter is really helping us do with them breadcrumbs and everything in there. It's going to make it sear over and get us a really good color. We'll flip them, do the same, and then we're going to give them a bath. Yes, we are, folks. We're going to let them have some of that luscious gravy right there. It'll be the happiest beef in the world. The meat has browned on both sides, and it's time to let it swim in the goodness. Whew, that's a pretty sight right there it is. Hear that beef laughing? Saying, bring it on, we love it. Mm-hmm, it is some good stuff. Now, one thing I am gonna tell you, let me get this out of the way. I need you just to fish down in there and lift them up just a tad and get some of that gravy under them. Cause you don't wanna lay in the bed without no sheets, do you? No, no, they, they need to get some of this good loving down there under them. And I need you to just put it on a low simmer. Now folks, that is pretty hard to do on Bertha. And sometimes y'all have seen her do it. She wanna keep the whole thing. So we're gonna put her right up here on what I call the low simmer side because she is really getting after it. And while we're doing all that, remember in that picture, it showed you some mashed potatoes, some green beans, a brownie, and this good steak with that wonderful gravy. Well folks, we are gonna have it all too. So I think we should get them green beans on to going. I got me about five pieces of that bacon thick cut slaster chopped her up in there, let her get to browning. Folks, I'm gonna give you a tip about green beans. Now, if you ain't got some frozen that you put up fresh or you got some canned that you put up fresh, get you some good frozen green beans. Best thing I ever use come from Sam's. Them big old long French green beans. Mm, them things is so good. But I do love some of these bird's eye and fresh is always, always better than them cans you buy at the store. So we're just gonna throw them in there. Now you be thinking, anybody can cook green beans. Yeah, I hear you. But no, can't nobody just cook them just like I'm cooking them because I ain't never give you the recipe yet. But guess what? It's your lucky day. I'm gonna give it to you today. People be adding water in there right now. No. Let's get us some chicken broth. That's what I'm talking about because that's what makes them good. You just want enough in there to sort of cover them. And then the thing that I think makes gray beans the best in the world is the original seasoning. We have made fed many a football player this meal right here with them green beans in it. They think it's the best thing ever. Give them a little stir. We're just gonna cook them till they get like what, Shan, that guy that drove through the hailstorm, what was his name, Al who? Vintage. There we go. So hang on folks, this meal's about to come together. They have come to a good simmer and got that chicken broth back hot, so we're just gonna drop us about three and a half to four tablespoons of butter in there, cause you gotta have it, and folks, just a little liquid smoke. Remember, I've always told you this stuff is potent as snake venom it is. So just a tad, whoa, that's a plenty right there. I guarantee you, you'll be able to taste it. Let it get that butter melted. We'll taste it one more time for seasoning. And whoo, this Hungry Man dinner is about to come together. There you have it, folks, the Hungry Man meal. Now I'm talking, this is a full-blown meal, mashed taters, green beans, that good Salisbury steak with that most delicious gravy ever, and a brownie for dessert. So where do you think we ought to start first, Jen? <laughs> you ain't lying. And that stuff cuts like butter. Mm. I'm talking that is a good looking bite there with them mushrooms and onions. Mm. Make me do the hey man hungry man dance. What? Ooh, namaste. I'm gonna stay till I finish this dish, I promise you. Where is the help? Culinary. Culinary. There's one culinary. There's the other. Now hang on, hang on. Let's have some manners today. Okay, there's yours. Hang on, wait right there. Good boy. 
good boy. Look he at is. Him. He is so athletic. He is. Thank you, Big, so much. Folks, that was easy and that was good, but don't forget that dessert. Them brownies little recipe will be listed down there below too because I am saving this till I get finished with all this stuff. But hey, everything we use will be down there in the little recipe down there. You can click it and you can get to it. Mm -mm. Hungry man. Thank you, Mr. Hungry Man, for turning me on to this so many years ago. It is a great day in the neighborhood. It is. But even greater day that I get to salute and take my hat off to all our service men and women and all our veterans and everybody that's keeping us safe at this time those folks that are fighting the covid i mean they're on the front line and they're getting it done hang in there folks good news is right around the corner good things are turning on and praise the lord pass the biscuits and the salisbury steak and guess what i'll see you down the salisbury straight trail <laughs> Break it on down and turn it on up. Watch your TV going. What you gonna do? Make Salisbury steak. Chan told me to just give it a clap, 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 clap. I have my fancy gloves on today. 